find an internal rate of return when you're not in a simple case of a single cost or benefit in period zero and a single cost or benefit that's at some time later. That's the easy case you can handle algebraically. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm setting you up with a couple of investments, A, B, and C. And you see they've got you know a couple of these weird patterns here. This one starts off with a couple of negatives and there's some positives. This one alternates negative, positive, negative, positive. This one starts out positive and then starts looking negative. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to effectively set up a, a present worth function, which is what we're doing right here. And uh, what I've done here, this is open office, not Excel. I'm just setting it up so that I'm taking this B2 right here, which is the period zero cost or benefit. And here I'm calculating the net present value of the remaining parts of the sequence using this interest rate that's right here. And it's currently set to 0.44, and I'll tell you what that means a little bit later. But the idea is, is that I can alter this interest rate, say at 10%, and it will tell me the present worth of the function. So it makes it so I can trace it all out. So starting off with an interest rate of zero, we see that this thing has a huge present worth. And as we start increasing the interest rate, the present worth of it starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And what we spot is, is that when the interest rate gets up to 50%, it's, it's negative, and it, and it stays there for a while. And the idea is what we're doing here is we're tracing out the shape of this present worth function. And if you want to see a little picture of what this guy does, this is a uh, just a uh, simple kind of program that allows me to go ahead and create some graphics. And so I'm just graphing this function over the range of 0 to 75% um, uh, interest rate and putting in a, a horizontal line there. And, oops, my apologies. And that's what that function looks like. So as the interest rate starts at zero, the present worth, which is measured on the vertical axis, is higher. As the interest rate goes ahead and increases, the present worth falls. And you're going to see that someplace around 44%, uh, 0.44, that's when the interest rate crosses that x-axis. And so crossing the x-axis, finding an interest rate where the present worth is zero is the definition of an internal rate of return. And that's what our, our function looks like here. So you can say that this root right here is the internal rate of return of this function. Now, there's going to be some other roots that are hanging about in the negative domain. Don't even consider those. You'll commonly find one of those when you're um, using your calculator. Now, let's go ahead and check over here on asset C. And you see this one starts off as a positive number. There's a bunch of negatives. So this one looks like you're investing money and getting a return. This one looks like you're getting some money and then making payments on it back. Now, if you start messing around with this present worth, you'll notice that it starts off with a negative present worth at an interest rate of zero. And then, as you increase the interest rate, the present worth increases. And in fact, some time between 10% uh, and 20%, it actually crosses that axis. So you know that there's a root someplace in there. You know that its internal rate of return is someplace between 10% and 20%. So let's go ahead and actually find out what those roots are. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. Way number one is saying, well, I've got this nice function that calculates present worth. I am going to go ahead and use a special tool, which is a goal-seeking tool. And you'll find these in most spreadsheets in OpenOffice. It's here. You can find it in a similar location in Excel. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to uh, set that cell right there to 0 by changing around this interest rate right here that it references. I'm going to hit OK and it gets me a result. And so what it does is it doing a, a, a simple Newton's method root find in order to find out which interest rate sets that present worth at equal to zero. Now there's a, a, a function built into um, most spreadsheet programs that does that too, and it's the internal rate of return function. And we can do similar things over here. Oops. We can do some similar things over here with uh, goal seeking. Setting that present worth to zero by changing around the interest rate. Oops. Excuse me. I'm just going to make it so it actually refers to DA. Oh, no. Um, let's try this again. Tools goal seek. Set it to zero by changing the interest rate. There we go. 
again, it's extremely close. This internal rate of, function, uh, rate of return function calculates it. Um, this equation right here ends up being a little bit tricky because you can start poking in interest rates and finding out the present worth is all sorts of complicated things. So it starts off positive and then you may see a turns it out to zero at 10% and then it's negative and then it's still negative and then it goes back to zero again and then it's positive again and then it goes back to zero again. So it kind of moves around all over the place. To get you to a picture of this, let's go ahead and plot it out real fast. You'll see that this function has a present worth measured on the vertical axis. It starts off positive, and then it goes down as the interest rate increases, reaches a minimum, goes up again, reaches a maximum, and goes down again. What you're spotting is that there are actually one, two, three roots there, okay? And that this is actually a, a cash flow that has three internal rates of return. So it's a little bit tricky to explain. And they're going to be at about 10%. I believe the other one was 30 and the other one was 50. Uh, so again, remember that internal rate of return and calculating internal rate of returns is not always the easiest thing to do, but it's something that you can actually quite easily do if you've got a spreadsheet with a root finder or you have some more sophisticated tool that uh, manages to find roots of polynomials for you because this is essentially all you're doing.